of traffic sales and profit we help entrepreneurs do three things drive more traffic convert more sales grow more profit along with my wife ronnie i'm also the co-founder of black and married with kids.com the world's largest african-american marriage and parenting site and we're here with a special conversation with with uh, so many different things going on in the world today um we are, are flipping the script a little bit with traffic sales and profit and we'll also be streaming this to our black and married with kids audience as well because today we have a very special topic that a lot of you guys are wondering and you want to know, right? Um, a lot of us are at home dealing with the ramifications of quarantines, dealing with um, the economy shakeout. And, and while we're there, we're trying to figure out what in the world are we going to eat? What in the world are we supposed to eat? How in the world can we stop eating, right? All these different things. So besides just the regular business principles and things I normally share, what I want to do today is come and have a conversation that talks about um, you know, the meals you have, how can you make those meals stretch if needed and necessary? You know, what are the foods that we should be eating to actually help build up our immunity and build up our systems? Um, you know, for those of you that are dieting, how do you diet in times like this? What do you buy when you go to the store in times like this when the shelves are sometimes bare and that you may need to buy something that you can use for several different recipes? This is not our normal business conversation. This is definitely a life conversation, and I'm glad that you guys are here today. Do me a favor. As you come in, make sure you drop a comment down below. I want to know who you are, um, where you're from. If you own a business, right, I want to know what that business is. You feel free to share that down into the comments. And while you do that, I want to make sure we take the time and I want to actually bring in my very, very, very special guest, one of my good friends and one of my favorite clients in the TSP Mastermind, um, uh, Chef Nina. So let me tell you about Chef Nina real quick. She's a, a celebrity chef, nutritionist, and chef instructor for the past seven years. Nona, uh, Nina Bryant has excelled in creating farm-to-table dishes for the masses while raising a family. This 10-year military veteran decided to create a food sustainable business that teaches consumers how to eat better and healthier for them and their families. Chef Nina was also a culinary instructor, holding certifications in serve safe management as an instructor, project manager as well. Currently, she is a personal chef to many of the Jacksonville Jaguars and um, many affluent families in the area as well. She has also decided to expand her business to help more in the anti and postpartum arenas of motherhood by creating a line specifically for them. Past and present clients include, y'all, get ready for this list, because this, this lets you know that we're not playing no games up in here. Common, y'all know Common, right? Common, Chi-Town's Chi finest. The Prime Minister of Israel, Dwayne Smoot, James uh, O'Shaughnessy, Leonard Fournette, right? Y'all know, y'all know who I'm talking about, right? Only the best. We're not, we're not talking about, all right, I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm stick to the script. Uh, Fournette, right? Miles Jack. There go another one. Uh, Yannick Nagogi, and owners of uh, Gate Gas Station, right? So, so Chef Nina is coming to us today to break down, to break down how y'all can do this food thing. So, let's on without further ado, let's bring on uh, Chef Nina into the conversation. And there she is. What's going on, Chef Nina? How are you? Good afternoon. How are you? I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing great. I'm excited you're here too. Thanks for having this conversation. Um, shout out to Malika. Malika's in the comments. She said, I'm your favorite, but I'll let Nina have it today. I said, I said, what are my favorites? I said, what are my favorites? <laughs> I got, got, I got a lot of favorites. I got, a, got I, I got a hundred favorites in the group. I got a hundred favorites, Malika. <laughs> but but um, let, let's talk about this because I'm sure since all of this kicked off the last few weeks, have more people than normal been blowing up your inbox with food questions? Oh, man. My inbox, text messages, people have been trying to FaceTime me from grocery stores, uh, from their own refrigerators, from pantries, trying to figure this thing out. Because not only are you quarantined, you quarantine with your whole family. So it's, it's totally different than, you know, the kids being off to school for eight hours. And then, you know, you're just in the house by yourself. So it has been very uh, interesting thus far. <laughs> so so what are some of the main questions that you're hearing? Like, what are the questions that, that you know, people are hitting you up in the inbox with the most? I'm just curious. So um, the most, you know, everybody knows how to make a basic spaghetti. Everybody can do a basic, uh, you know, meatball. Uh, but the most has been, okay, I'm tired of eating spaghetti now. I'm tired of eating meatballs and burgers and chicken. What else can I do? Um, I went to the store today and my kids wanted grilled cheeses and they didn't have bread. So do wow. you have a bread recipe? Um, how do somebody asked me like, uh, you know, what's a substitute for Pop-Tart? 
Like, can they can they create something like a pop tart at home? So different things like that. Those I, I like, the foods that they used to just buy in are not easily accessible anymore. You know, and that, that makes a lot of sense because that's one of the things I was talking about with my wife, Ronnie. Um, you know, Ronnie, but for everybody else, right? My wife, Ronnie, I was talking about the other day is the fact that we normally eat out a decent amount. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and I, I told Ryan, like, there, there's so many people that, that eat out a lot. And I feel like what we've done is we've literally taken fast food to a degree out of our society, which is a, which is a major change, right? So now people are trying to figure out how to adjust and change some things around. And then, like I said, you add on top of that the fact that when you go to the grocery store, some of the staples that you normally may be used to picking up or just grabbing for you, the kids, the family, whoever may not actually be there. So it's serious right. out here. It is very serious. Even um, I think somebody was trying to make a roast and they had never seen the different cuts of meat before. So they didn't know which cut of meat to buy because it, they were so used to buying like top round, the expensive kind. So it's like different things like that are happening. And it's kind of like traumatizing folks out here. <laughs> So, so let me let me ask you, right? And guys, um, hey, if you're just tuning in again, I'm here with celebrity chef Chef Nina. My name is Lamar Tyler, creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit. Um, and today we're talking about food, like 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 what's going on with the food with all this stuff. So, so let's talk about number one. I got a few topics I want to cover with you. And the first one I'm thinking about is how can people stretch food? Because a lot of people are getting laid off. A lot of people are going to be in a tight situation financially in a few weeks, right? If we can't get this thing turned around, if they're not there already. Like, like when somebody says, all right, like, like, what should I buy or, or what are the things that I can get that make me stretch, stretch that time between the grocery store longer or that aren't super expensive? What are some of the things that you might tell them? So um, I know everybody's on this uh, no carb eating uh, situation. You might want to bulk up on it. Uh, potatoes, flour, um, uh, yeast. Which is amazingly was sold out of two grocery stores here. I was like, ain't that many people cooking no bread now? But yeast, uh, you want to have flour. Even uh, our gluten free folks out there, arrowroot and different things like that. Um, you want to have your sugars, brown sugar and your white sugars. You all, but potatoes out and canned um, tomatoes. Any kind of can. I have stewed tomatoes. I have plum tomatoes diced tomatoes chop you want to keep those on stat on stock and um crackers is another one that you want to keep and um i would even venture to like what is it the like chicken of the sea the canned chickens and and, and tuna i i would all, always um keep your pantry stocked up with things like that because those are some quick and easy things that you can make just using those basic ingredients, baking soda you want to keep on uh, on staff, and you want to keep uh, baking powder as well. Right. Are y'all getting this? Uh, let me know if you're getting this down in the chat. Let me know if this is helpful so far. Um, Chef Nina's already dropping dropping nuggets. She said, if y'all on that no carb kick, you know, for <laughs> until we get through this time, <laughs> you might want to reassess. Bags. Couple bags of potatoes out there. <laughs> All right, so you know what, but but this is good though, right? Because because a lot of these 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 staples that you're talking about are what our parents and our grandparents, right, and their yeah. parents. Th this is how we got through a lot of times to, to get to this point that we at, and we forgot about that a little bit. I mean, if you think about it, like I grew up in D.C., right? So you we had um, oh, what they call it, like the little the little food boxes they used to get my grandmother every Saturday. And in that food box would be potatoes, some type of tomato can. Um, it would be sweet potatoes and white potatoes and peanut butter, you know, like different things like that. With the way that recipes are going now, you can still take that same box, that same little. It was from the church. I can't remember. But, yeah, it was something like that. But, um, you know, they drop it all to your grandparents' house and they make you eat yep. the government cheese that be in the box. That <laughs> box. So, um, like you take those same staples, but with all these new recipes on how to cook vegan and stuff like that, you can flip all of this stuff for the low and keep your family fed for a week by, you know, Uber eating it every day. All right. So hold on, hold on. Cause I think you just dropped a nugget there. Cause, cause we talked about the fact that we may have to go back, right? To, yeah. um, cause it's people, it's people listening to say, you know, 
I grew up like that, or you know, my parents grew up like that. But 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 they got you know bad memories about what some of that stuff tasted <laughs> like. But what you're saying is, hey, we can go back, flip some of that stuff that that sustained us in those times, but come back and remix them with today's yeah. recipes, with with um, today's flow, with knowing some different things about nutrition um, that we may know now, right? To make it flavorful and everything like that. And I want to yeah. give a shout out real quick, um, Chef Nita Laura Knights in the comments. She said that's probably her mama taking all the yeast. Because she over there with her making fresh bread every other day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord's mom. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, all right. So, so um, we talked about some of the staples, right? So now what about some of the people that say, well, you know, you get questions about I'm, diet I'm dieting right now. Or I'm trying to diet. Or, um, you know, I saw somebody the other day said, like, this thing is like a never-ending Thanksgiving. It might have been me. Actually, I think I told Ronnie that the other night. I was like, this is, it's like, this is like Thanksgiving except it ain't a weekend. Like, it's like two weeks in. Like, we had to start getting out and being active, right? Because Ronnie's been throwing down <laughs> every day. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So so we've been holding it down. So so have people been asking you about how they maintain diets? Like, what's some stuff they can eat or some stuff they should be eating to kind of help and make sure they don't get out of this thing and right. pick up an additional 20, 30 pounds in the process? So what uh, what I've been saying and what I've been noticing is that every time I was uh, I, I ventured out, I finally ventured out of the house and I went to the uh, Walmart. I just went to a basic store. But what I've noticed is that <clears throat> the produce section is still full. All wow. the frozen food is gone. All the prepared meals are gone. But fresh fruit and vegetables are still there which is very odd to me because everybody's on some kind of diet. So what I suggest is since you're, since you're the cafeteria lady or cafeteria man for your kids, where you're making their breakfasts and lunches and dinners that you include a piece of fruit with every meal and you include a vegetable with every meal. If you have kids between uh, maybe a, a VP Kers all the way up to third grade, create a color wheel chart and on that color wheel chart makes them pick a different color to put on their plate at every meal. That way it ensures that they're, they're you know, they're still regular. They're still getting their fruits and vegetables in there. And also, um, yes, we're quarantined, but you can still go outside in your yard to make sure they get that outside play and they're taking bottles of water with them. Water is essential every day anyway. This is the opportune time to make your kids drink water. We ain't got no juice. We drink water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All that stuff you've been trying to get them to do is now is the time. Tell them grocery store was sold out. <laughs> Go, <Yeah>. Grocery store, <laughs> grocery store was out of juice. Wasn't that on the shelves? <laughs> yes. I, I love it. You know what? So I love it. So, so um, I think you're the key point, too, because a lot of people, I think, are saying, all right, you know, we quarantine, we in the house. And I think a lot of people just uh, just um, sticking in the house too much. Right. Like you can't actually go outside. You can't be out there, you know, playing pickup games of basketball or, you know, soccer, nothing like that. But you can't actually go outside. I mean, yeah. right now we, we got up yesterday. Uh, first thing in the morning. Right. We went on a uh, I think we did four mile, like a four mile uh, brisk walk. Right. Oh, now, okay. I, I will tell you, we, we did like just under it because we got almost to the halfway point and I seen another couple come and they oh, no, came right, right where he's going to turn around that Chef Nina. They turned around in that area and I thought about, what's up, Dr. G? I see Dr. Joffrey on here, right? I thought about Dr. Joffrey. Dr. Joffrey say six feet away, right? Or six feet under. Yes. And, and I seen them turn around. I told her, I said, you know what? Like they turned around right in that area. We're going to be right in that, in that breathing space where they was at. Yes. I said, you know, you know what? I'm going to hold off. What <laughs> Ronnie looked at me, I was like, you know, I'm like, look, we ain't got to go this extra 20 feet. Let's just stop right here, head back. So we did like, like 3.9. I <laughs> got your gold star for today. And that's right. it. But that like our kids, we, um, we still keep a, like a school schedule. So they still have PE every day. So when they go out for PE, they take their bags of grapes and their bottled water and they play baseball or tag or whatever. Oh, we did. Um, if you have those VP sight words, we did. Uh, I like dodgeball, so we did sight word dodgeball. So if you got the word wrong, I'm hit you with the ball. But that worked for me because, <laughs> like, you know, they out the house and I'm having fun too. So little stuff like that to you know keep it active, but they still took their fresh fruit 
The um, icy man came. We got icies, you know, stuff like that to just keep them motivated because kids get sick of y'all, too. So they don't want to be in the house with you all day either. <laughs> hey, it's, look, let me, let me tell you, though, they ain't got no choice, though. I right. better not hear nobody say they sick of me. How about that? I <laughs> better not hear nobody say they sick. Look, look, uh, shout out, to, uh, shout out to Dr. Joffrey, right? He told me that was, was a good move. He told me, you know, cutting that extra 20 feet off was good. I, w- I was mad. <laughs> The other morning, me and Ronnie went out, and we were walking down the street, and the young dude came and like ran before we got to the corner. He ran across the street. <laughs> and then, I'm telling you, all the stuff, Doctor. Look, y'all, we are giving you nuggets in the group every day, right? Hey. All the stuff, Doctor. Look, I, job, Doc job. I, you know, I, I did the joint, covered my face, my nose, <laughs> held my breath, got through there. I was like, look, I'm not playing. I told Ryan next day, I said, we gotta get a little bit early. It's too many people, too many people crossing my path right. this time of morning. So next day we went out a little bit earlier, but um. This is good. Hey, shout out to Malika. Malika in the comments. Um, Chef Nina, she said, now uh, prepare yourself for this. She said, my housekeeper just took the foil off my range stove yesterday. Now I'm afraid to cook anything. So, I'm, you gonna... clean it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad she got the foil. I'm glad, I'm glad, Malika, you got the foil off. I remember seeing a picture about it. I forgot about that. I'm glad you reminded me. I remember seeing a picture about that. Malika's already gone back in the day with the foil. She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> she already there. She already there. She's already there. She already, all she needs is all she needs is the carbs now. That's it. She's, she's already the there. We're there. <laughs> so so just for the quarantine, Malika, you got the okay for Chef Nina to put the foil back on your back. actual burners, right? We're gonna we're gonna take it back. All right. So <laughs> let me ask Chef Nina. Let me let me stop playing Malika for a minute. Um, so we you talked about the fact that when you go in the grocery store, the number one thing you are seeing is produce, fresh produce. You talk yes. about all the frozen, all the frozen um, vegetables and fruits are gone, right? The canned stuff, but the fresh is there. So let's talk about um, how people can build up their immunity system through food and nutrition. Because I'm assuming some of that stuff that you see in there is probably the primary way you can build up your immune system. That's the area that everyone should be going to. I mean, and that's why they put it in the front of the stores. So you reach that area first. But one of the first things I saw, and it was on sale was navel oranges. I live in Florida. So navel oranges for 69 cents a pound. That is probably the lowest I've ever seen them. But you need oranges. Why? For the vitamin C. We need to start building up our vitamin C. We need, we need vitamin D. You found that in your dark green vegetables. I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen Walmart have pretty produce like this before. Like what is happening? Because nobody's touching it. So you want to... Um, you want to get those carrots. You want to, I mean, it's uh, ginger, lemons. We, um, we've been making juices for my clients using the green apples, ginger, and lemon to help build up immunity. And ginger, you know, ginger fights off every and anything. Onions. We made a, a French onion soup. It is a thousand degrees in Florida and we made French onion soup. <laughs> And but the onions help to just fight off bacteria and stuff like that. So even if you don't have anything, you you can still strengthen your immune system at this time, which is a perfect time for you to do it because you are quarantined, because you're supposed to stay away from each other. Let me ask you, Chef Nina, because um, just the other day here in the group, Dr. Joffrey was talking about um, and Dr. Joffrey, he's in the comments. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was saying that. That vitamin D is one of the things that that we need. So you said vitamin D is in those dark green vegetables. What are we talking? Is that like spinach and kale? Yes, spinach, kale, asparagus, broccoli, greens? Must, mustard broccoli. greens. Yes. Can, can I get vitamin D out of my mustards? That's what I need to know. There you go, collards, mustard greens. Put a pot of them on. Have Ronnie do it every Sunday. Put a pot of them joints on. I'm telling you, any dark dark green vegetables have all of it. And the great thing about Black folks is we like broccoli anyway. We like gaseous <laughs> vegetables anyway. So go ahead and just eat them. You don't have to buy the fruit. And then what you can do is, since Ronnie's already in there cooking for Thanksgiving every week, get some of those <laughs> freezer bags and break those greens down and portion them. So maybe, you know, the kids want greens on Tuesday, but you don't want greens on Tuesday. You want the uh, the uh, uh, the buttery dill lemon asparagus she made start portioning that off to how much people eat so if you eat you should eat on the average four to six ounces of vegetables per serving 
So if you can portion it off that way in your freezer bags, you ain't got to go fancy and get a, a vacuum seal. You don't have to do that. You can get these Ziploc freezer bags and start portioning stuff out. And then that way, those same greens, oh, Ronnie, them greens were so good that you made it last. Guess, guess what, Lamar? I got some in the freezer. Bam. Pop that out. Put it in a pot of boiling water. You got greens all over again. Okay. So you're talking about freezing them after she actually prepares them. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so, okay. So, um, so that's, that's good. And I think that goes into something Malika just asked in the comments. She said that she buys frozen because the fresh stuff sometimes doesn't last as long. Is there a way to make it last longer? So this is how you make, you get it still fresh, but you actually make it longer by making sure you get it in that freezer. Mm hmm. So those people who are, I, I know Malika is busy, 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 but take a day. And if you cook in like some of your, even lasagnas, pastas hold up so well in the freezer. Um, that was one aisle that was still full of stuff, which was odd. It was like plastic, uh, freezer bags, parchment paper, a uh, foil and stuff like that. Get that stuff and go get you some permanent markers and start making those foods that you like. And instead of just throwing them in the refrigerator, go ahead and break them down in these bags, write the dates on them and throw them in the freezer. So when the quarantine is over, them same greens we had four weeks back, we she don't have to make them. They still in there. So look, I, I feel like this whole conversation, <laughs> it, this whole conversation has gone somewhere I didn't expect in a good way. Because one of the things that made me realize is what Malika just dropped in the comment. She said, you answer my question, my grandma freezes everything. And like we, talk, like we talked about a second ago, right? Like so much of what we're, we're seeing and we're talking about we need now is the stuff we grew up on. This is the stuff we saw our grandparents doing, right? We, we, thought, we thought they was crazy to have them, them extra one or, two, one or two freezers in the, uh, in the garage or in the carport, right? But now, now, now we see the need for that. Now we see the need to freeze some of these things to have, you know, freeze these portions up. Now we see the needs to have these. Um, we said we wasn't eating none of these carbs because we only knew knew with the diet, right? But they knew those carbs is what actually helped you stretch those meals. Exactly. And That's think good. about it. Let, let's say if you had a, a, a one, one good dish during this time would be curry, right? Curry chicken, curry shrimp, uh, you know, curry tofu, whatever. But curry has potato in it. And then it also has tamarind in it, which is great because we need that in our, we need that anyway to break down any ailments in us. So if you make a curry and then you break that down, a curry is simply just chicken and protein and, and carbs anyway, is what you need. All you got to do is, you know, grandma, my grandmother used to take, maybe 10 chickens and break them down. But you break down a chicken, that's eight pieces of chicken. That one chicken costs two to four dollars. But now you done made curry chicken, fried chicken, and then she's going to break that down again by portions. So now you got four meals that you made one time. So you have to start, now is the perfect opportunity, perfect time to start a, going back to those, you know, things that our parents taught us, but B, also teach your kids. And they need to be helping you just like we had to help our parents do, do, do this the same way. It's all, it's all a circle. I love it. I love it. Look, I'm looking down into the comments. Um, Angela said, I'm looking for a deep freezer now, none available. <laughs> you got to go to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. There we go. That's that's a good nugget right there too. You know, because sometimes when I'm in Home Depot or Lowe's or store like that, I forget that they sell certain types of yeah. accessories and appliances until I'm in there, like in that little part of the store. Because naturally, that's not what I think of. I'm thinking, hey, I want an appliance. I need to go to Best Buy or the Sears when they were around. I think Sears might be all the way gone now. But you know, yeah. that's the kind of you know primary thing I was yeah, thinking Best of. Buy, Best Buy is still open here. Um, we went to Home Depot and actually got toilet paper. And um, Lowe's is still mm. open. So, and Lowe's had, actually, they had their deep freezers on sale. Mm, that's good, so, y'all. Chef Nina dropped the nugget about going to Home Depot to get your toilet paper. Where everybody else is at Walmart and Target, <laughs> right? You might need to slide to Home Depot. I, I didn't even know they sold toilet paper, right? right? But it makes sense. I knew they sold paper towels and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right, I'm jumping to, hey, Malika said um, her grandma got two fridges and two extra deep freezers. She about to call her now to apologize. 
You See, better right. We're going over her, we going over her house because she's she ready. Good. She she's is good. Ready. Probably beans in there. She is ready. She she's like, I told y'all, right? You want to be on the Facebook and all that stuff. I told no, y'all. Freeze. And I got going. all these freezers over here. You Uber eating. All right. So so look, y'all, hey, if if you got questions, let me know real quick. Um, if this is uh your first time, you just joined in. My name is Lamar Tyler, creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit. Helping entrepreneurs drive more traffic, convert more sales, grow the amount of profit in your business. We're joined today by celebrity chef, Chef Nina, um, uh, uh, chef to the stars, chef to um, Iraq, right? Can I say Iraq? She she from D.C. I'm from P.G. County, right? We got DMV in here. Iraq uh, uh, of, um, of football NFL players. And she's bringing her knowledge and expertise to you right now to help you feed your family through everything that's going on. All right. So, so um, Chef Nina, um, for everybody watching, if you got questions, go ahead and begin dropping your questions down. We're going to take Q&A out of the group in just a second. Uh, while we are doing that and waiting for them to do that, Chef Nina, can we talk about what you can do to get your kids to try new foods? Because I always hear, you know, uh, everybody with kids, right? Your kids don't like to eat stuff. They're always complaining about stuff. I tell yeah. Ronnie, hey, look, I don't think we should care. I was like, this, this was available to eat. Eat it. Don't eat it. Ronnie has a more compassionate heart, but I ain't tripping. Um, but, um, I'm like, I didn't have all the choices growing up. It just, right. my mom right. ain't get down. My mom ain't get down like that. So it's this new age stuff though. Right. So, so let me ask you this. How can people get their kids to try new things? Like I said, especially when we're not eating out as much, everybody's eating at home. So if you only make those four or five, you know, go to's right. and the kids don't want them and you keep making them over and over, like, like what are ways we can get them to try some different, different meal options? So I probably have like the best and worst job. I'm a chef who makes an amazing everything who has a daughter who hates everything. She does <laughs> not like anything. She will eat a plate of corn to just not eat stuff. So one thing I was like, man, I got all this time. She going to eat this food because I was forced to eat this. stuff. you want to eat this food today. I bring her in the kitchen with me. So she one day she helped me organize everything in the pantry. We have like a little sheet where we write all of the stuff. Like we have certain certain pounds of flour, certain certain da 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 da. So she had one day she had to organize the pantry. One day she had to get all of the um, ingredients for a recipe. One day she had to cook the recipe by getting them actively involved. And sometimes kids just don't like stuff because the name is weird, especially younger kids. Asparagus, ew, gut, like it's just, ew, that's gross. What is that? <laughs> oh, it looks like a tree. It's just all this. But once you have, get them involved in trying to taste it or in trying to make it, it just, um, it gets their mind going like, oh, what else can I make with this? For instance, my uh, we made we did a live where we made a Greek meatball. My daughter, she will eat meat, but you trying to add green stuff and white stuff like you doing too much. And she made the tzatziki sauce, and she doesn't eat sauces. Ew, it's runny. Oh, uh, I don't like it. But when she made it, she was like, "Oh, this is good. It has lemon. Oh, I can taste the onion." They start, they, they start developing their own palate. So this is a great time and a great opportunity to just start busting out different things, especially green stuff. Kids do not like anything green. I don't know what it is. They don't like it. Cabbage, they don't care. But start introducing those things. Beans. Instead of just serving them beans, maybe make it into a patty or make it like a, like a veggie burger using those beans. Like do different stuff so they can see it in a different form. And then maybe they'll try it. All right, I love it. Those are some good nuggets. I wish, I wish we would have had those years ago, right? Years ago, I, kids. I don't know what's the kitchen. I don't know what's they had. You know, eat this. You are gonna eat these butter beans? You are gonna <laughs> eat this cornbread? And that's what it is. We don't have nothing else. Kids have no palates. They just be eating. They <laughs> they like they'll go not even fast food palate. They go to the fast food joint and be like, hey, I want a burger with just cheese burger. only. Yeah, I'm like that joint looks dry. I'm like that burger. <laughs> I'm like no condiments, no no ketchup, no mustard, no onions. That joint yes. looks dry. <laughs> Make me cough, and I'm not even the one eating it. <laughs> exactly. All right, I'm not alone. That's surprise. I thought I was. I thought I was the only one ever heard of that kind of stuff. All right, this is awesome. All right, so I got a few questions for you. Let's go to the first question. 
Okay. It says, hey, Chef Nina, I'm trying to avoid hitting the grocery store so frequently since we are on stay-at-home orders here in St. Louis. What staples okay. can I buy to make long-lasting meals for my family? Well, first off, you need to go ahead and like my page at Chef Nina G so we can help you stretch your food. And second of all, like I said, you need to get beans. You need to get um, not the canned beans. I would get the bags of beans, like back in the day. I would get um, turkey necks. I would get flour. I would get I would get green green vegetables, and I would start making dishes along with some freezer bags and breaking those bags down, breaking those dishes down into uh, proportions. Also, think about um, uh, I call them the, the 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 family heavy hitters like the pot roast, um, lasagnas, baked spaghettis. Um, uh, we make salmon cakes a lot. So salmon cakes is something that we would eat every single day. Think about dishes that you would eat every single day and get those first. And that'll also keep you on a budget. This is the perfect time to learn how to budget your food. Perfect mm -hmm. time to learn how to budget a grocery list. Also, before you go in that grocery store, make a list. That'll keep you from deviate and eat before you go too, because that'll keep you from deviating and going down aisles you don't need to go down. And hold on, hold, hold on a second, because I, th I think you dropped the nugget. You said that you should eat before you go to the grocery store. Yes, please eat before you go. Have you ever um, left work and you are hungry, and then Ronnie might send that text? I need you to go pick me up three things, and then you go to the store and spend two hundred dollars and ain't get them three things she she asked you for because you was hungry. But you got Twinkies, though, and honey butter. All <laughs> right, true. And Doritos. True. <laughs> you got everything else. Because you're you're not, you're thinking with that, oh, I'm hungry. I just want to eat right mm -hmm. now. You're not thinking that you need to bring this up home because in an hour she's going to have, no, you need to eat right now. So eat first before you go to the grocery store. Eat a carb first <laughs> before you That's go to good, the grocery store. That is a nugget. Hey, I got another question from Dr. Joffrey. He said, do you have recommendations for meals for runners? He's a runner. So do you have any, any recommendations for meals for runners? Oh, Dr. Joffrey, add cloves to your food, like ground cloves. Or um, if you juice, add a little ground clove to your juices and stuff like that. That'll help you with your energy and with fulfillment. Um, also, if you can add bananas. For potassium, you need to add those. That'll help you too. Um, how are you running every day during the? He's still running during the quarantine. I think so. Yeah, I think I think Doc Joffrey. I think he, he's probably out there getting it in. Yeah, I would definitely add potassium. I would add cloves to your food. Um, he probably doesn't eat a lot of starch. Oatmeal, oatmeal it up. Oatmeal lasts forever. It has no expiration date. You can keep it on the shelf forever. Oatmeal cookies, oatmeal muffins, oatmeal pancakes. So hold on. So this is good. You you keep dropping nuggets, right? And I, I got to dive into the nuggets. You dropping nuggets. You don't even know you dropping nuggets, Jeff. Let me let me just just so many just fall out of you, right? So let's go back. Hey y'all, let me know if you think Chef Nina is dropping nuggets. Drop drop a uh, comment down in the comment section. I want y'all let let her know. Maybe so I'm not tripping. Um, so you talked about oat, oatmeal, right? Because I love oatmeal. Like I said, oatmeal you just put it in the pantry somewhere. It just it's just there. Right, yeah. it's just there. What is? Let me ask you this: What are some other foods like oatmeal that last? Like, there's not necessarily canned foods. Are there other foods like oatmeal that maybe, maybe it don't last as long as oatmeal, but they last for a long time? Beans. Beans last, especially if you buy the. I don't really like buying the the um the canned beans. I like buying the the one in the bag, the one that costs a dollar. The cans cost two eighty five. Bushes is two eighty five. The bag is a dollar. And it, it it just it just stays there. I don't even know how long these beans have been. <laughs> I don't even know. And the, oh, another thing. Um, this this is a stock, right? The expiration date on this stock is November twenty twenty one. So that's, uh, prayerfully further than the quarantine. But stocks you want to keep on it because stock that's where your flavor comes from in all your dishes. And you can use a stock for a soup, any sauces that you're trying to make. Stock, keep stock. I don't. And then um, onions. Onions last forever. They don't have to be in the refrigerator. Some people put their onions in the refrigerator. I got a whole bag hanging right here. 
It's three different types of onions I got going on. Onions last forever. And you can make a million different things with them as long as you keep them in a, you know, a nice temperature place. You know, you can't be, don't have them outside. But, you know, keep them in a, in a, in a nice temperature. Onions last forever. You don't have, there's no expiration date. And they keep, they just keep. And then a lot of people, now this is a chef tip. So, you know, when you get the onion and on the outside of the onion, it starts, you think it's molding, right? Uh-huh. But onions have like 45 layers. If you peel that first layer off, you probably notice, oh, well, the rest of the onion is not molded. Use that onion. Another tip, um, what's that sort of save a lot? I went in the save a lot and they had, um, you know, people picked over the Roma tomatoes, the cute little tomatoes everybody likes. But <clears throat> they had like some older ones that were kind of bruised. Nobody buys those. Buy them. Talk to the manager and see if they can get that price down. Because ain't nobody going to buy them no way. Because they bruised. Buy them. And then you can use those those uh, tomatoes right there for, for sauces real quick. You might need a marinara sauce to make your kids some pizza. You might need a spaghetti sauce. And then um, also invest in things like this. Like this is a um, 12 ounce plastic container. So I have hundreds of these. But these I can put sauces in or put uh, my clarified butter. If you're on my page, I put I made clarified butter and then I put them in the freezer. You can put these in the freezer. They're already portioned. Drop mm-hmm. it in boiling water and bam, your sauce is warm. All right, so I don't know if y'all are <laughs> catching all of this. I'm excited. People in the comments are excited. What's up? Plant Bay Jeff said, we need this, Chef Nina. Hey, Jeff. He said he also loves uh, beans, great source of iron. What's up, Nicole? Said, great topic. And said, I love onions, even on the grill with olive oil and salt and pepper. Yes. Right? Um, yes. Let me see. Mushroom. Hey, hey. Uh, Dr. Joffrey said, for the, for the runners, he was asking about ginger. Is ginger good for the runners? Yes. Ginger is good for everyone, everyone. But you need ginger, especially for a runner. I would do ginger in the morning. I don't know what time you run or, you know, I would, that would be like, soon as I wake up in the morning, I would do me a ginger water or make you a, um, like a pit, like I, 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 you know, everybody has these bottled waters, throw a piece of ginger in there, shower, brush your teeth, get dressed for your run and then drink that. Um, Dr. Joffrey, I might have a, a, a Nina's Gatorade recipe for you that has ginger in it. So I'll uh, send that to you. It's really, really good. I use that for my running backs, actually. There we go. So, so let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. Um, man, I got like 50 more. Qu- Every time you say something, I got 50 more questions. So, right, so, <laughs> so, so, Chef Nina, we might have you come back one time. You want to come back for us? Yes, of course. Okay, okay all right. So let me, let me ask you this. Let's dig into this, right? Because you talked about what you use for your running backs. Now, one of the things that you do do, some of your clients... Um, and you have clients that are, 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 you know, everyday people as well. Right. But, but you do have a, a client, um, some clients that are, um, professional athletes, right. Uh, NFL players and such. Um, and not just, you know, dudes this just made it, but, but some of the top tier athletes in the actual national football league. Um, yes. I'm just curious for athletes, like, like. What are some of the things that you, you take into consideration when you, when you feed them, when you have a client? Because we sell our business page. Let's talk about the business and like the food a little bit, right? What are some of the okay. things that you, you take into consideration when you have a top-tier athlete where his body is his business, really, right? It's like, like, like what he eats impacts how he practices, how he performs, what kind of money he makes. Does he get the next contract? Does his body break down to injury? Like, like just talk to me a little bit about the business of – being a chef for professional athletes of um, how important is it? Does it make you nervous that, you know, you are really fueling this multi-million dollar machine? Like, like, can we talk about that a little bit? I'm, I, I used to say I'm the uh, electricity. I'm the electricity <laughs> for, for, for the building. And if I don't source this electricity right, then uh, the building might break down. But um, it is very difficult. It is very nerve wracking. Um, but I think I love it so much because I know that I am, uh, I'm like on a team that is, it's, it's, it's like a monster. It's almost like a monster that you're feeding. You got to feed. And if you don't feed that monster, right, it's going to throw up. So, uh, when I first get a client, first of all, I'm very nervous cause I'm very like 
standoffish a little bit because I really don't know them. I don't know like who they are in the sports world. But if you tell me what your position is, I can break down your food habits or what you should be doing based mm, on. That, that's a where- nugget. That's a nugget. Hold on, I got to stop you right. Nugget break. That's a nugget break. So certain <laughs> people, <laughs> based on the, their position, right, then you know what they should be, uh, what their intake should be, what they should be. So give me an example, right? So, so you, you know, you got you got one of the top running backs in the league. So a running back versus somebody that is a defensive back. Is it different yeah. or a line? Okay, let's say a running back and a lineman, because it's two two very different. Very different. Very different. So you got you got a, a running back and a lineman. What what does those those you know? So running backs. When I I look at them, I'm like, okay, that's a that's a lean person. That's a lean, mean running machine. But you got somebody on the defense. He got to be able to hit, and he don't want a skinless, boneless chicken breast. He wants uh, the collard greens with the oxtails. And uh, he wants heavy carbs. He wants mashed potatoes, fried potatoes, any way you slice it, potatoes. But then I have a lean person who runs, you know, they even at I have one who even before he goes to practice, he runs four miles before he goes to practice and then runs back home from practice. So he's on quinoa. He's on brown rice. He's on um, steamed roasted vegetables when I have this defensive end who can eat like, I mean, they just eat. He might need to do 4,000 calories a day, but this person needs to only do 2,000 calories a day. So you have to be able to systematically turn that switch off and on when you're cooking for these people. But one thing, one of my favorite questions to ask them that they think is odd they're like, why would you ask me that? I always say, uh, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? When you're dealing with athletes, the age range is 20 to, to uh, 33, right? Uh, 33. That's, a, that's a big difference. That's a big, that's dif- a big difference between a dude that's 20, just out of college, whatever. Dude, 33 can be grown. I got a yes. family. I got kids. Whole wife. You know, everything is going on at home. So it's different when you deal with that. It's two different. And then you might have the 24-year-old that I have who has several children, but, you know, doesn't have the extra, you know, the wife or whatever. But he he knows that he needs to maintain. Or maybe I have the athlete who was injured. I had that one who was injured for a whole year. And then I have to think of, I feel like a mad scientist. I have to think of things to help him rehabilitate because it's not just about the the workout. It's not, he has to have the fuel to be able to make it through a workout. He has to be able to have certain vitamins in his body, not just like, you know, stem cell shots or B12 shots. He has to be able to have food that's going to help him do well. Like, or, or, and, and this is the other thing now with these 20, 33-ish players, they picky. They like kids. They don't <laughs> like, I don't like broccoli. I don't like spinach. I don't like, so I have to figure out a way to still get you that vitamin D without you even knowing because you're, you know, that age with a lot of money, you'll just throw it away and go buy some food. And then you'll be like, well, what do I need her for? I got to be able to maintain myself as well. So <clears throat> as difficult as it is, It's fun because it's like a science experiment. You have to make sure that you're giving them exactly what they need to perform. I, I might not uh, uh, watch the games, but I, I, if I hear oh, Miles Jack had a concussion, oh God, he has a concussion. Okay, what do we need to do for uh, brain cells? What do we need to do for to stimulate blood? What do we need to do for memory? What do we need to do? You know, I'm thinking about all of these things while you guys are just cheering. I'm thinking about what I'm going to bring to him tomorrow after his rest day. So Mm. in a nutshell, that's what it is. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, this is amazing. Hey, um, if you're just joining in again, my name is Lamar Tyler, creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit. I'm joined here with Chef Nina, celebrity celebrity, uh, chef, nutritionist, 
and chef instructor. We've talked about ways to stretch your food meals during this time when you may need this thing, to, 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 the food to last a little bit longer. What are the main staples you should be looking for when you're shopping, when you're in the grocery stores? We talked about how to diet during quarantine. We talked about how to develop better eating habits. We've talked about how to get your kids to try new things and also the foods that you should be eating to help build up your immune system, right? Everyone needs to be building up their immune system right now. Chef Nina talked about that when she goes in the grocery store, she sees a lot of things there that should not be there. They should be in your home instead of being in the grocery store. So if you missed it, make sure you go back and watch that piece of it as well. Chef Nina, how can people get in touch with you, right? Because you got great services. Um, I don't know if you want to share anything about your services, but definitely can you share, you know, services or how they can reach you, how they can follow you, how they can get in contact with you, anything like that. So um, I have been dedicating my hands to, uh, you know, servicing the people out here via food. So um, my page on Facebook is called Knives and Aprons, and it's at Chef Nina G. And pretty much I'm just telling you how to take the stuff that you have currently in your house to take um, immunity boosting foods and showing you how to make easy and quick recipes that makes everyone happy. Uh, we just Speaking of carbs, we uh, just posted this morning a recipe, a sweet potato brownie. That literally takes 20 minutes to make. It's very simple. And you have every single ingredient in your house right now. So um, Chef Nina G is on Instagram and on Facebook. And you guys can hit me up anytime with any type of questions. Uh, Dr. Joffrey, I got that Nina's Gatorade recipe for you. I'm going to post about that tomorrow. I'll make sure I tag you in it. All right, y'all. So there you go. You heard it. Um, directly for Chef Nina. Make sure you follow her. Make sure you, um, you know, uh, join the actual group. Follow the page. Join her Instagram everywhere she's at. Um, get on her email list. You want to know what she's doing and what she's rolling out and what she has. Again, uh, Chef Nina, thank you. Any last words? No, just keep eating. Just keep eating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Uh, again, guys, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this, to be a part of this community and to tune in and, and get a hold and just the information you're going to need for the next few weeks, next few months to make sure you're on the right track and where you're supposed to be. Again, my name is Lamar Tyler, creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit, co-founder along with my wife, Ronnie, of BlackAndMarriedWithKids.com. We are also streaming this too uh, as well. And I want to encourage you guys to keep pushing, keep doing what's right, and make sure you're eating well through all of this. All right, have a great day and we'll see you next time.